So you took the cab over here? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I still could drive, you know, short distance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have a deal with the cab, though? Um, like a sp- no, no, because they all independent what? drivers here. Yeah. yeah, but they have the the umbrella or the cab. Right, right. And uh, but they, they, you know, I just, uh, you know, they accom- accommodate me. Well, that's good. Uh, yeah. But they don't. I was do gonna it, say they do it through paycheck. Oh, okay, I see. The commercial. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Monthly, you know. Yeah. So that's how I, I get you're the, my. You're the face of you're the face of the cab. Four, two, 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 two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey, this is. What is? Are you the anti in that? <laughs> the tutus, the yeah, the three tutus, tutu. the three tutus, the three tutus, two tutus, two tutus, yeah, four tutus, two tutus, two tutus. That was it. But they, don't, they didn't run it after COVID because not it, the, the drivers, not all of them came back, so they cannot keep up with the volume. Therefore, they cannot advertise. They mm. only put in a newspaper, but that's about it. I'm done. I think a power radio, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cab, yeah. I don't think they're going to go back with the commercials because they cannot get the drivers. Yikes. Oh, yeah. You gotta move to like Uber. <laughs> nobody <laughs> gotta, nobody can keep up. Yeah. yeah. This technology is just crazy nowadays. Yeah, and, but the fact that people don't wanna work. For real. That's true. If you guys don't know who this is right here, this is the one, the only, the legend, Mr. Frank, Frank DeLima. Hey, aloha. <laughs> Frank DeLima. Here we go. Talk about Hawaii Tell comedy. Hawaii oh. comedy. This is, this is the man right here. I mean, this guy is the godfather of hawaii comedy <laughs> you know he <laughs> he paved the way for comedians like me and all the other comedians in hawaii my second interview with you <laughs> and second portuguese interview. like yeah. me that's right I first did. interview was how old you were oh i must 17? have been like yeah like maybe like 18 or 19 yeah, big football player him and then the other guy was even taller yeah bigger guy come to my little apartment and they started interviewing me about comedy wow. and and um little did i know that one day I would see him on stage. Yeah, that's right. I, w- I was doing a project on Hawaii comedy um, for um, some Hawaiian class, and that's the topic I chose. And I think it, it was the first person I called. I, I think I found your number on the website, and you an answer. And he was like, yeah, of course, come over, do the interview. Isn't that crazy? You literally called his number, and he answered. And he answered. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is unheard of nowadays. Like, calling someone, finding their number on his website. Usually, I'd go to like you know an assistant or whatever. real, real Hawaii style. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Especially back then. Yeah. yeah. But, this, but uh, when did you start doing comedy? I was a little boy. You know, I my comedy started way back when I was a little kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, it was just imitating. Mm. Uh, I used to hit, because I lived in a neighborhood that had sixteen homes: Pakohana Street, Pa'oa Valley. Okay. And eight ethnics lived in those houses. Eight. Eight of them. Yes. Okay, so that's I guess. A, that's Chinese, <laughs> Japanese, Okinawan, Portuguese, Filipino, Haole, Puerto Rican, Korean. And and uh, five of my my age boys. Yeah. Okay. Five of us call ourselves Paco on the Street Boys. <laughs> we all hung out together. We go hung out, hang out each other's homes. All my friends had grandparents. They all were of the different, from the country yeah, they yeah. came yeah. from. So I would break away from a board game, maybe in the evening that we stay overnight, kind of. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And I go hang out with the grandmother or the grandfather and talk story a little bit, pick up accents, yeah. heavy pigeon, pick up all that kind of stuff, and, and, and vocabulary, style of cooking, what kind yeah. of food, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's you know, how it started. Little kid, I was talking, talking, talking all the time. They would, <laughs> if, if I would walk over to the house on another day when we're not, you know, like during the week, and, you know, just to visit, was, I used to love visiting the old folks. Mm-hmm. And uh, if they saw me come in, they were busy, they closed the drapes and closed the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. So, but... Yeah, learn That's planning. how you, yeah. If, if you've ever seen his shows, like he's a, uh, you're very, I noticed that you're very uh, knowledgeable, well rounded. well rounded in every culture, like the Japanese, the Chinese. You can even, can you speak other languages? A little bit. A little. That's a, yeah, that's very. Little, I hear it in the comedy know, too. Like, yeah, and and uh, like Filipino, I can, the three dialects, but that's uh, Ilocano, Tagalog, and, and mm-hmm. Visayan, but only because um, uh, the ladies at the, my Blessed Sacrament Church in Pa'oa Valley, where I grew up, <laughs> okay, the Filipino Catholic Club. Yeah. Every year they would have their fiesta <laughs> twice a year, sometimes fundraiser. And uh, you just hear their 
their um, accent. Yeah. If you watch their Filipino dancing, I used to go home and go practice the Filipino <laughs> dancing. <laughs> go get two candles and try to make turn like that. Oh I wasn't that oh, agile. Yeah. I couldn't do it all the way. <laughs> but, you know, and uh, so I... Uh, learned I uh, practiced from what I was I would experience where mm -hmm. most guys you know wouldn't go that route yeah they, but me I would always go home imitate whatever uh, mm -hmm. cultural dance or song or whatever it may be like uh, I remember telling the story of my show I tell them a lot about um, my neighbor the Yonashige next door growing up their grandson Grant he used to hang out with us and uh, they had the first TV in the neighborhood, and they used, we used to watch on Sunday afternoon samurai movies. Wow. And, but one Sunday, they preempted it, and they had this old man singing Nani Wabushi, which is like this, Nani Wabushi, like that. <laughs> and so I go home, and I would go in front of the mirror, and I would practice it till I got them good. I was about nine when I had my first costume wow. character, and it was uh, the Nani Wabushi man, I entitled it. <laughs> and uh, headpan, you know, old sheet yeah. with red lipstick. And, <laughs> and then get my mom's quilt. She used to make Hawaiian print um, quilts, craps from the Aloha Shirt Mumu that we wore for the family. Yeah. We used to dress alike when we go out. She yeah. used to make sure us all, us kids safe, you know, like one of the wander away, right, you know, right, kind. Right. And uh, you've seen so, it from young age yeah. then. She had a nice quilt, so it looked like kimono to me. So I just <laughs> yeah, yeah. threw them on. I did my character, and I went over next to the Yonashige's grand grandparents, and I uh, performed for them. For them. Yeah. And they were cracking up. <laughs> and and nine, nine, nine years old. So much fun. Nine. Nine years old. You must have been uh, a fun neighbor. I was uh, like, you would come over all the time. Well, timing was good. You know, like I in my in me, I just knew when because sometimes you know kids get. Holding or spanking yeah. Yeah. Or for this performing or imitating or whatever. But in my case, I don't know how it, it just, you have it in you. You just yeah. know when. Yeah. Yes. And so I never did get scolding for my imitations. And, and what, what kind of ethnicities are you? Um, my, my major ones are I'm, I'm one eighth Hawaiian, one eighth Irish, and one eighth, uh, no, one uh, quarter Portuguese. Oh. I thought you was hundred percent Portuguese. I know. Everybody thinks. Wait, wait. Think my mom, yeah, my mom is half. My dad is half. So that would make me half. Yeah, I forget. What yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Folks figure yeah. Them out. Twenty, twenty-five, okay, so twenty-five. I'm half Portuguese. <laughs> one eighth uh, Hawaiian and one eighth uh, uh, Irish. Irish. Then the others is um, Chinese um, and uh, Spanish, English, and French. And French. Wow. Yeah. So that's a small kind, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like old oh, Chinese man. When Chinese man came from China long time ago in the beginning part of the immigration here to Hawaii and found one Hawaiian lady, and that's my great 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 asso. <laughs> <laughs> when um when did you start like getting on stage and and doing live comedy? What age was that? Would you say? Because nine years old, ten years old, you're. Imitating in front of family. Imitating and doing yeah. performances for family gatherings, yeah. neighborhood gatherings. Would you count that or not yet? Yeah, you want I, professional, right? Professional, yeah. Professional would, yeah. Have, would have been uh, when I got out of well, uh, out of the seminary and getting paid mm -hmm. um, was for my brother-in-law's tour company. So he hired me the next day after I, I decided to take a break from from uh, from my graduate. Uh, degree. Around what age is this? You, you would At say twenty. Well, how old was I? Uh, 24. 24. Yeah, and so he hired me. So I he put me with a Hawaiian trio because mm -hmm. I sang Hawaiian music. Mm. I, I, I started learning more of it in the eight yeah. years I was in college and graduate school in seminary. And uh, so I knew a lot of songs, and uh, I was falsetto as well. Wow. Oh, wow. So I sang Kalamaula and, uh, and Akaka Falls, you know, all of yeah, those. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hawaiian wedding song. I take the Wahine pot and the other guy took the other pot. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was, yeah, it was like I could reach. Oh, my gosh. But then as comedy came about and I started using more of my, my voice, uh, the voice got lower and hard. And uh, that's right. what happens to falsetto right. sometimes. If you don't just take care of it and that's the only thing you do in your career. But me, it was just like natural. All of a sudden, how come I don't have it anymore? You know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I did this, the 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 falsetto singing, and it was very popular amongst the Canadian tourists. 
And then I would slip in my Jokes. imitations yeah. of the Japanese, because they know Japanese, they yeah. know Chinese. Mm -hmm. So I would slip that in in between my Hawaiian music. Plus we had hula dances. It was for mm -hmm. morning briefings, yeah, for, yeah. for um, luncheons, you know, beach parties. Um, the in between. Yeah, all that. Yeah. All day I was working. Right. Yeah. Oh, so it was mostly... Music then, With but you would music slip in and comedy some in comedy. Between, yes, all the comedy I did from when I was a kid, but I couldn't do it all because it was Canadian tourists. Right? Yeah, but I did some, and it did work. Right. And Portuguese jokes, I just changed it to Nufi jokes. Nufi, you know? not Polish. No, Nufi. N what is Nufi? Newfoundland, Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I always wondered that. The too. mainland, mainland East Coast is yeah. Polak jokes. Okay. But in Canada, it's Nufi jokes, at least back then. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if they do it anymore. Right. But anyway, I was told that that's the kind of jokes they tell was the same jokes, was just Nufi instead of Portuguese. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> it's like the Pollock jokes. Yeah. You know, same thing. So uh, I used all these uh, different jokes and, and, and routines mm -hmm. and, um, and do my Hawaiian music in between. Then one night, uh, my my uh, my uh, brother in law told mm -hmm. me there's a, we can put you in the club 400 at the Mikey Marina, so that was my first nightclub act, but it By wasn't yourself. a nightclub act. Yeah, it was a bar. Okay, and it was uh, the first day. Where was that this I went at? There what is at the Waikiki Marina Hotel? Okay, is on, that still on around? Ala Moana hmm? Avenue. Okay, Ala Moana Boulevard. I mean, yeah. Um, it uh, the double tree is downstairs. I don't know if it's still. I don't know. I never looked long time, but yeah. Uh, whatever it is, it was a four o'clock show, early show, Sunday. They gave me one chance. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody was there. How long did you? Have I had all those tourists though. That yeah. I, but I just had to try it out first. You know that could I just tell them come to my my you know show. Yeah, but yeah. It was a four o'clock show, and only had uh, two people came to oh, see wow. me. And I think they were in the building for something. So they came down, they heard music, they came inside. It was Bonnie Isaacs and his girlfriend. Oh, wow. And uh, Bonnie loved it. They both did. And they told all their friends. Next Sunday, came back with all their friends, all locals, in the entertainment business and whatever. And they loved my Hawaiian music, the falsetto, and the comedy. Mm -hmm. And that's when I could just do my comedy, you know, yeah. whatever I had from growing up. And so from there... I started doing nighttime, and then uh, then after that, I moved to the noodle shop. The noodle shop. That's, <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about Mili the noodle Fujinaga, shop. Because there was a group there called Manaloa. Yeah. And Manaloa. Um, Where is the noodle shop? At the Waikiki San Villa Hotel, but it's no longer a noodle shop. It's what is it? Something else. What is it there? You don't know what it is now? No, I don't know the name now. Okay. A small club, uh, like roughly how alley, about 120 people. 120 people. Yeah, it's on Kanakapole Avenue. And they would they would always have like musical performances there. Yeah, before yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I then went down get... with my friends and I sat in the audience because I knew them. Mm -hmm. They called me up on stage. I did Radio Coho. I did the Portuguese fight song. She loved it. She the manager was, <laughs> the manager was in the audience, yeah. so she asked me. She offered me a job, and I said I. Uh, she said Tuesday, Tuesday. Uh, I think it was uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And this is and, when you was like, um, I was twenty, getting, getting more, pop, 26, more popular. 28, 20, well, With, no, I never got popular. Never yet, popular. Not yet. No. <laughs> Nothing. And that noodle shop is where I got popular. Oh, okay. With so Lucille. Around 26. No, 28, 29. 28, 29. Yeah. And then Lucille came up. Before that was Abdullah Fata'ai. Abdullah Fata'ai. Yes. You know what yes. that is? I remember. I'm six feet tall. Uh, and nine feet tall. Oh, nine feet tall. Yes. Six feet wide. And I, that's when I did. Abdullah Fata'ai is that album. <laughs> I put it on stage at the shell, and I called it the Fortress uh, Starlight Follies. And it was like, I got I got actors, you know, like dancers, or yeah. football players. Because right. I, what I did is I did the vaudeville thing where they have this big staircase, and it was like 20 steps. Is that the Waikiki show? Yeah. And then I have f uh, four volcanoes, or the cut, cut out volcanoes. Wow. <laughs> and I had pyrotechnic where the volcano would big, erupt. Big production. And, uh, so I know, you're production. <laughs> and this is the beginning of my career now, okay? What age, and, what uh, age was this at? Huh? What age? Uh, Abdullah came out in oh, 1979. So I don't know, let's see, 20, maybe 29, um, not 29. Yeah, 29, 29 years old, yeah. around there. Let's, so, let's go back to the, the noodle shop because I know we, we kind of jumping all over yeah, but sorry. that's okay 
But like the noodle shop, so you, your first time in the noodle shop, you would say it wasn't that that popular that at the popular, time. That um, popular, and uh, but after uh, that first show, the talk the started people, to go around. The, pop, the people started to come already from Word uh, of mouth. the fact that uh, I was doing Radio yeah. Coho and I released the album A Taste of Malasadas. Okay. <laughs> And so th that was with Radio Coho, Chinese, um, with the Sancho Lee. How do you come up with all these music? I don't these songs? Up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but you're quick too. Like if, if yeah. there's a hot topic, you yeah. turn it around in a, yeah, do, you have, yeah. do you have writers or anything or is uh, all you? Uh, I have an editor when I was doing full blast. Yeah. You know, like you have to change the show every six months. Right. My name is Patrick Downs. He would help me with my shows. Okay. Uh, but when I, and then I put him on stage. I've ad lib had almost. The content you know, was you. Know, you. The, yeah. There's the, the, the four four numbers, four character, uh, cons, four costume characters in your show. Somebody uh, in every new show, and um, and with song in you yeah. know, parody. So uh, he would do some, I would do some, you know, whatever it may be. But then sometimes I would just the rest of the routines was just stuff that I brought back from traveling because I would go away mm -hmm. two times a year. Mm -hmm. And I come back with ideas yeah. uh, from Germany, from, from uh, Japan, from whatever. And I would bring back and create some kind of, you know, little simple kind of costume, come out and say, I went to Germany and they have, yeah. uh, I saw this big signs on the freeway, fart. And I said, fart? I said, my gosh, what a word to be using on, this, <laughs> on the freeway. <laughs> and I said, what does that mean? And it means uh, it's a mov movement word, mm -hmm. ein fart, hot fart. So <laughs> Osfart is to exit and Einfart is to come on the freeway. Oh, wow. And, uh, wow. and they had it on the train ticket. Yeah. They had it for airplane ticket. But it's a movie. So it's funny, right? That's so then funny. I did a whole five-minute routine on the whole thing. And it's, would you would you write this routine or would you just no, add a bit on stage? just talking, yeah. So you don't write anything down besides songs? No, I didn't write besides down, no. It's all in there already. Yeah. Wow. Was in there because I was experiencing it along the way. Yeah, and you do a lot of crowd work too, right? I Talk do. I love it. I yeah. love it. I love back when in the day. I, Mother's Day is my favorite because that's when you get the old Portuguese ladies up sitting up front. <laughs> they come early, and all they, excited they and ready. And, they, and, they, and they, you just and then I just yeah, like I, like I told you it, it, earlier, I said, you know, I'm, I'm always gonna go with, hi, what's your name, Mary. And you know, sometimes they sometimes they react, you know, which is so fun. <laughs> and you know, she was said, "Why not all Portuguese ladies they marry?" I said, "Well, don't have to get sassy. I just want to know what you know. What what is your your your, your sister's name?" And she <laughs> said, "Then they would say, luckily, if it's lucky, yeah. she would say marry." I said, See, "I told you, <laughs> yeah. so, you know." And then you go, or you have to dig a little yeah, bit more. Yeah. Or your they cousins. say your auntie's name or your grandma's name. Yeah, you know? somebody. But one of them in their family. <laughs> Get married, maybe in the middle name, but it's there. <laughs> it's there. And so it all depends. It so that's just one example it of is. many, many, many different what, what opportunities. What is your uh, favorite ethnicity to make fun of? Um, nobody. It's all the same. It's right across the board. <laughs> right across the not board. Portuguese, not Portuguese. Not Portuguese. Portuguese. Well, anybody it, can uh, get it. You know, like <laughs> it's th that whole thing, like with the with the the, the Portuguese ladies. You know, that's going with the cultural things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That we all have idiosyncrasies, phraseologies. Yeah. Uh, and the reason what I said from the beginning, I learned all of this from growing, growing up and experiencing it in Pakohana Street. Why do you think the Portuguese get? Made fun of them. Uh, well, because they were Luna, yeah, back in the plantation. Luna days. is the, um, the, the, the Paniolos. The, the foreman, foreman no. for the plantation. Oh, oh. On the horses, yeah. though, yeah? Yeah, yeah, they were yeah. on the horses. And they were a little bit on the strict, strict side, you know? Yeah. So when you, this like a strict teach school teacher. Yeah, you make fun of them. You make fun. Yeah. yeah. So the all the workers in the plantation, they used to make fun of them, you know? And so they start, you know, knowing about how they talk. Yeah. What, you know, if they, you know, they, they say, oh, they don't take shower, you know, that kind of stuff. And so, you know, those jokes, that. that, yeah. those, those, that's why they got attached to that Polak jokes from the sailors when they mm. came to Hawaii. So, so they these the jokes butt, were already the floating joke. around, you know, or they, sometimes it's real. So it was, you know, just a matter of, uh, you know, at the time that those jokes developed. Yeah. It's like plantation humor actually developed. You know, because everybody was so close together, mm -hmm. and in order to get along, they they would become friends. That's why they and when they became friends. Pigeon, they would, right? They created and pigeon, pigeon also because they couldn't pronounce you. Yeah. yeah, this is like um, uh, Portuguese. Yeah, it's from Portu from Pukiki, right? 
because the Portu- the Hawaiians couldn't say Portuguese. Mm. Portuguese called itself Portuguese, but you know, Why so they you gave it the name Pukiki. I'm learning things. Pukiki, <laughs> and then Pukiki, you get what lazy. is Pukiki? But Portuguese in Hawaiian. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, they I don't know if they just created the word or what. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But you know, so. But that's what I was told. That's what I learned. Now, it could be something else. Some, some scholar out there might say, nah, <laughs> yeah. And I would say, well, that's the way life is. So I'm going to say, okay, this is what I heard from from Kupuna, right? Yeah. So at Kupuna, they all get their own too, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? You know, they have imagination and visions <laughs> at night, you know, and then those things become real. Yeah. But my manager used to tell me, she accused me of that. Oh. You know, you dreamt it. It never did happen. I said, I swear, it's just so real in my mind. He says, your mind is in another world. <laughs> so whatever it is, uh, that's Pukiki. Pukiki. Porigi. Porigi. Okay. Can you see how it would be? Yeah, I yeah. see so. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So it makes sense, you yeah. know, if it's true or not. But what, about, what about what uh, about the term blala? Blala, uh, wow. <laughs> you know what that is? <laughs> blala and tira, right? Yeah, blala and tira. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, remember so, your, your joke book. That's I'm right. a blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, well, you know, the brada. Brada, yeah. But then when brada act up and become, you know, yeah. then... They developed it into blala. That's what I. Is this a natural thing? I think that happened. Right. That you know the brother when say hey brother how you doing okay right and then look and look at the blala over there getting all rough with me you know so <laughs> you know so probably that's how Tita from Tita yeah 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 Tita so, you know this develops it's, it's a more of a the character of a of a sister yeah. becomes more of a rough wahine mm-hmm. you know so mm-hmm. that's why it's just a pidgin English a a play on words mm-hmm. and. And, uh, That's like all his songs too. How would you come up with a with a song? So yeah. would you would you like? Because a lot of them are um, parodies. parodies. Yeah. yeah. So you would listen to the popular original well, songs. I, I have all kinds of songs in my head. Yeah. Or if <laughs> sometimes I'm listening, I'm like I'll give an example where I did Kona Law. What happened was I went was going to um, Red Hills Elementary School, and on the way. Uh, we had the bad weather, right? The, with the Konolo, they were talking about the meteorologists. Yeah. We're talking about, <laughs> gave them the name Konolo. Uh-huh. And uh, so they were talking about it on, on Mike Pear show and uh, talking about the fact that we used to call it Konawin and Konawain, mm-hmm. but uh, not Konolo. But they just brought everything together to call it that. And it's the moisture from the south coming up, giving us. But you don't know where it's going to be, right? Yeah. You know, the wind of thunder lightning going to happen, might be sunny, and then one minute, the next minute, boom, there we go. That's Kona Lo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so we talk, I was thinking about because I watch the meteorologists every day. I watch the weather because I get banana and papaya trees, you know. So I, you know, I always want to know if I'm going to have to water, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so every day I watch. But so I was listening to them. And then on the way back, they were playing, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. And right there I said, Konalo, Konalo, Konalo. <laughs> and so then I just built from there. That's awesome. Oh, the wet outside, stay ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and the air, stay thick and muggy. <laughs> and the wind, stay hardly blow. Konalo, Konalo, Konalo. Wow, that was uh, a- I feel like we should be paying you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite song you created, or most requested song by audience and fans, and your favorite? Oh my gosh, well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't have the request in my show. That's why, but I would say I love. Was, Ab- Ab- I'm fortunate to have the Lucille. That Lucille, was, yes, that's one of his popular songs. That's the most. Yeah, that one really put me on the map. What is the original song? Well, the tune to that one. Uh, Kenny Rogers, Lucille. Oh, Lucille. We the fire. It yeah. was translated to Pigeon, my friend. Did oh. It. Yeah. Okay. So, and then um, another famous, well, famous one which gave me like, some problems was Makalang Dang Saloyot Billy Oh, my oh yeah. What happened with that one? I was in a commercial with this guy named Tremaine Tamayose. Uh huh. Um, and. You said it gave you problems. Well, like, yeah, like, I'll tell racial. you the story. So, yeah. <laughs> so I was with Tremaine in this rowboat at Magic Island. And we're going to do a commercial. And he's looking at me, and all of a sudden he starts singing, Makadang dang soyot biligo, dang galagala bud bud. And I started cracking up <laughs> laughing. And so then we had to film, and that was it. But it was in my head. Yeah. So then I, that night was Christmas time, huh? 
So that night I went on stage and I just did the same line but backwards and I went gala gala bili goat gala bili boy su sala sili toy too and then I developed them every night until it became the Filipino Christmas song yeah. black dog roasting on an open fire <laughs> you know that was a, that's the line that got me the big oh. and, but it's the funniest line in the whole thing it is you know? <laughs> and oh come all you people Joy pull and try on panto come yo sh to come yo sh to eh eh babit come to Wailoa and Kalihi Uka so simple you just you'll find us in White Park find us in White Park you'll find us in White Park and now I do Ever be now Kapole I added that towards the ending part because that's a new division but. So there, but some some Filipinos didn't understand the humor there. But it's mostly about food, the beginning part. From all my growing up yeah. and learning, but but pecha pecha badoya and balut and and all that and kind only, of stuff, you know. And it's throw them in the song. Yeah, you know? and it's only funny because it's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People and, just need to relax. Yeah, yeah they so, gotta relax. just enjoy yeah, it. But, uh, but that's it's hard it. for some people. Right, right. That's all. Yeah. And when you get into comedy, you gotta expect it. What would you say yeah. uh, was your 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 big break? Like your where you thought to yourself, okay, and now I'm getting popular. Lucille. Like, Lucille. Yeah. And this is when the, during the noodle shop. Abdullah shop. I mean, Abdullah shop. <laughs> Abdullah <laughs> Fata'ai. Abdullah Fata'ai. Abdullah Fata'ai was the beginning, but Lucille was the first one. Okay. Because they were right next to each other, one after another. And you was doing how many shows at the noodle shop? Uh, noodle shop was one on weeknights, two on the weekends. And then after Lucille came, there was three weekends, two on weeknights. And uh, that uh, so five times a week you'd be five oh yeah five times a week yeah and oh, sold out almost every every all week. the time six months in advance because oh, small place oh, wow. that's why wow. small place I heard people would fly from the mainland to come uh, watch I me. heard but you know, <laughs> and they would uh, the, and people would wait in line for the next show it would yeah be around the building right you know, line did you ever take your your act on the on the road I did I had ten years of that. Uh, so I did San Diego. The first time I went was only LA. Yeah. And it was at the Konohoe restaurant. And I was in a small little bar, again, small bar. Mm -hmm. uh, that guy started with the uh, Club 400. When I went up there, it was called, uh, I, I had it in my head, but I wouldn't go off the track. Yeah, the yeah. Pocho. Um, <laughs> what's the name of it? Oh, anyways, it was a small little bar connected to the big showroom there mm -hmm. at the Konohoe. SOS was in that big showroom. The boy that brought me up was Moku Young. And Moku found out about me in Hawaii. So he said, come up and do a show up here. So I, my trio, we, f we flew up and we did five nights. But the first night, again, nobody was nobody. in the bar except for one, two Portuguese people. <laughs> was Mr. and Mrs. Fernandez. <laughs> and their back was facing the bar. They were on the bar having their drink. And then we start music, the beautiful falsetto, mm -hmm. three part harmony, you know. And then invite turn around because if Hawaii people, right? Yeah. So, and then I do my little burrito coho in between, oh, oh, and all that kind of crap. <laughs> and then they loved it. They were having so much fun for the rest of the night. And then at the end of the SOS show, uh, before the, my show, the first night, I went in to say hi to them. Yeah. Well, they brought in 50 people to fill up the room wow. at the end of their show. In to LA. support me, yeah. And uh, for my third set. Yeah. That weekend, people, the phones were off the hook. Wow. Following week, they had to take reservations. For a 50, 60-seater. Yeah. Nice. And uh, people, the word spread, because, mm -hmm. you know, LA and uh, that whole Gardena and all that area is full of Hawaii people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they're Loaded, everywhere. and yeah. they all know each other, you know? And yeah. this is just word of yeah. mouth. Yeah. No word Instagram, it was, no, social no social media. media. It was word of mouth. That's and awesome. uh, so we were there for the, the planned mm -hmm. four weeks. Then we came back home. And uh, following, we, following year... Uh, let's see, what's his the uh, food and beverage manager, a local boy. He was at the uh, Long Beach Airport Holiday Inn, mm. and uh, so he Did a show found there. out he wanted me to bring my show up there. So they sent the emails out, whatever, five hundred seater, and Sold out. Um, I did two shows. Oh, the nice. following year, went back, and this. Oh, is that my phone? I'm so sorry. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay, it happens. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> okay. 
So I got to turn this thing off. Let's see. Sorry about that. But they go. <laughs> yeah, you had them off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me turn this thing the, off. The silent oops. button on the side. Do not disturb. Yeah. yeah okay. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Well. <laughs> anyway. That's awesome. I mean, because I see that too when I when I do shows in the mainland. There's Hawaii people everywhere. Packed the place. And so the following year, they uh, San Diego wanted me. San Diego. So there was San Diego, L.A. Then uh, the food and beverage manager, somebody up in San Francisco was mm -hmm. a wahine. And um, so Honda was her name. This is all after Lucille. All after Lucille. Yeah. And so then, uh, so then I did three. Okay, so that would be I take off from little shop, yeah, and I'll go up there and do three weeks, three weekends, and then the, then it, then we added Oregon and then Seattle and mm -hmm. then Las Vegas. Mm. Um, so it was uh, by the time it was all the f five places or six, I forget. Uh, I'd say it was seven solid uh, cities. Cities, yeah, that's um, awesome, and seven solid uh, vi uh, yeah. trips. Right. Did you so, like touring? Once a year. I loved it. It was yeah. good fun. In between, there was nothing to do. Yeah. The, the shows were always sold out. So we just go touring <laughs> yeah. and we go eat. And, you know, San Francisco, we were right there in Chinatown at the Holiday Inn in Chinatown. Mm -hmm. You know, that show we had 400 seats. And uh, it's amazing. It was wonderful. Yeah. And they used to pick us up airport with the limousine, you know, all that oh. kind of stuff. You did that for about 10 years, you said? Mm -hmm. Which is the that's late 80s routine. and the 90s, yeah. Would you ever go in like East Coast area? Was no, never no. East Coast. I did do Canada one time for Mohawk community. Yeah, because I had two fans that would come every year to the Polynesian Palace. Right, and so they asked. And me, you're kind of used to that crowd from your brother-in-law's um, tour company. The tourist crowds. Yeah, you had what all about the. It? You're used to that crowd in Canada. Oh no, that was a, I. I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you had but it, even though that was so far. The, you know, but I had it in my brain. You know what I how I, yeah. but they wanted me to do what I did at the palace. Right, right. Dress up in the Mary Tunta, <laughs> Sumo, the Who Cardinal Vermicelli. <laughs> so I just did those characters yeah, for them yeah, yeah. because those the the, the the community there. I think there must have been about 150, mm -hmm. and uh, so they know me from my videos. Right, right. So that's why they wanted to see it live, you know. And who, then, of course, my ad-libbing with them. Who was the the top comedian before you? In a way? Yeah. Was that Rap Rap Replinger then? Or we were that, all the same time. All the same time. Mm -hmm. And Deepu Muntai mm -hmm. too? After. After, yeah. Was there any um, competition with you guys with Hawaii shows? Well, when the Hokus came out, um, <laughs> we had, uh, all of us had an album, Andy, myself, one year. Yeah. Three of us had an album. And uh, I think it was Rap that won. Well, Andy won. Yeah. The youngest one. Yeah. So I so Rap said, we go up there and we're going to take the award from him. <laughs> 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 so I said, hey, if I go up there, you better follow me now. Because I don't like, look like a total creep. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you, you look at me in the eye now, Rap, and Promise you don't me. ever, ever go back on this plan. <laughs> But then it's going to be funny. Yeah. So I ran up and I said, no, it's mine. It's mine. My album was more funny. And then here comes rap. Yeah. Oh, but ah, you guys are Johnny. We've grabbed it. So then oh, Andy went to that. the big hoku on top of the wall and said, this is mine. This is my life. It was all on film. Oh, for real? That's, we oh, yeah, we got to find that. Find I, that. I have it simply out of the word. Yeah. Is, but. How, was, how was rap? I mean... He's it was fine. He was a high temp, uh, you know, this high always energy. up like this. Yeah. yeah. He's not, it's, it was crazy. He's a crazy <laughs> man. He was funny, you know. And uh, I used to go see him when he performed in um, Alamoana Hotel. He had a show there for a little while. Right. But, you know, God bless his soul. He passed, passed young, you know. Yeah. But, but um, he was very, very, very creative. Oh, yeah. So yeah, much. I bet. So much in that brain of his. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all baboo stuff. You know, it's great. <laughs> You know, tell fate nyan nagi. So what happened was <laughs> that's the song. When, but I, that came out the same time that I um, I did Lucille. Oh okay. okay. Oh wow. But it came out first. Yeah. And then I did my Lucille. 
it's kind of similar, but it's not, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, tell the fate, you know, I love her. And mine is, what, Lucy? Are you going to leave me now? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That kind of stuff. So that was kind of like uh, the two, the two yeah, songs. Yeah, the two big songs. Yeah. And this happened to be about the same time. Good, healthy competition. Yeah. yeah. You know, I remember uh, uh, what, Howley's Anonymous. Oh, occasions are strange people, <laughs> I and I got you, that from uh, short people. Yeah, yeah, strange people. I think even you throw in one, you threw in one where they said they think Andy Bumata is funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they carry yeah, yeah. on. Also, it was you know you throw in your friend yeah. names, you know. But we Andy used to come to the noodle shop, asked if he could do my sets because that back then I did sets. We didn't do shows. Oh, okay, so it was Hawaiian music. With yeah, he started at the noodle shop. Right? That's what. Yeah. And uh, so he did my sets. I would take him home after work because he lived right down yeah. the street from me. And then he would ask me, well, how was it? And I'd tell him, well, you know, you know, you hear him laughing. You know, that's kind of, once you yeah, hear him yeah. laughing, then, you know, good. And uh, so I helped him out a little bit. He always says that, you know. Yeah, I, he helped me out. Too. My, one of my, like, my second time performing was uh, I opened for him at one of his shows at, at Blue Note. Yeah, so... It That's just pretty... come passed down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody help each other. Yeah. yeah. He was a Xerox That's salesperson right. daytime. And, and uh, nighttime, he'd come to the shop. And then he got good. And so then uh, Kojaks, the owner of Kojaks, came in and took yeah. him. Oh, wow. And then from there, Booga Booga took him. Mm -hmm. And then from there, he became Andy Boom died. Yeah. Wow. What, what would you say, like, Hawaii comedy, the evolution of Hawaii comedy? How has it changed from the years... Cause I know there was not like, changed too much. Still ethnic. Still ethnic. Yeah. Yes. It's you only that. Your own. Like you have your own. Uh, um, your own experiences, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's all the same thing. And Hawaii yeah. ethnic, and it's just like you come from a family of Samoan and and the Portuguese, and you. Yeah. But you have your own stories, which is completely different from my stories. You know, right. and that is the way it is. But so the thing is today. Um, they get you know, sensitive. there's only the, this <laughs> politics and there's yeah, yeah. And yeah. other things involved. People get offended. Where, you know, these, these, I pity the younger generation of comedians. But they don't know. know. That's how that's how us Hawaii people are. We we make fun of every race. That's right. We only get offended if you don't make fun of that's every race. Right. <laughs> Those are the days that it and that were developed. But uh, today, there's a lot more people moving in that don't have that. Yeah. So, but you still got enough audience. Yeah. So you came around the same the good time yet. <laughs> yeah, I still, I mean, I make a lot of fun of Portuguese, Samoans, because that's yeah. what I am. But even, you even, are, yeah. even Filipinos, I, I even... Of I've course, been little, yeah, but. yeah. But I, you know, <laughs> when I open my show, I always say I'm Irish, Scotch, English, Spanish, French, Portuguese, Chinese, Hawaiian, Visayan, <laughs> Visayan, Tagalog, Ilocano, and, all and, Ikaro, and I just include them in, you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. The, they don't know if I am or not, you know, whatever. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, Filipinos, they're the ones. Did you ever have to deal with any uh, bad hecklers or? Oh, no, not too often. Not too often. When I first started in my career, I did a bowling banquet at Al Moana Hotel, and uh, I was fresh in you know. So this guy in the middle of my, sh I didn't even tell Portuguese joke yet. I was yeah. just uh, introduce myself and doing my you know whatever comedy I was doing, and this guy stood up. F you with the middle <laughs> finger going like that loud. Yeah. Just drunk? I, I don't Probably. know. Probably. Angry. Yeah. And so I, so I stopped. Demonic. And everybody looked because he's a <laughs> bowler. He was part of that group. Mm. And then he started walking to the door. And he kept doing it. And I'm going, I'm Midurge, you know. And I said, what am I going to do with this? How can I bring the audience back? I yeah. don't even know what to do. So then he went out of the door. And I said, Wow. I said, ladies and gentlemen, he bowls with you. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, every time he missed the he go got a ball, does he do that to all of you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so I just That's got a good out way. of it. That go, way. That's a good way to yeah, to bring him back. I rolled in. with it and then I continued on. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get him on your side though, that guy? No, he He's went. Still, he left. He got kicked out. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if he was mad at me, bad at somebody, whatever. Probably mad at but, himself. Yeah, because I guess, you know, because <laughs> he looked like he was Portuguese too, that's why. And I think he knew I was going to tell Portuguese jokes. Yeah. He was, it, he was visioning it happening. Right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> Portuguese jokes is the best. Oh, the but, funny. You just, because they just throw you off, you know, yeah. completely. You just, you know, so I just love I remember the one you. in your joke book, you said, uh, the Portuguese cop 
some officer Silva or whatever pulled over the criminal off on Kiamoku. But he said, oh, you can drive to King Street because I don't know if we'll spill Kiamoku <laughs> on the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> Holy Moses. But you know, the Portuguese is mad because they said, they talk to us and we stink, we stupid. I said, look, <laughs> if you're stinking stupid, then get mad. But otherwise, yeah. don't get mad. Yeah, <laughs> you're not stinking yeah, stupid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but then people pass by and they're going, to, I said, no, 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 no. I said, so that, then I started, this was way beginning part. I separated Portuguese with Portuguese. Yeah. Portuguese is a race. Portuguese is a condition. Condition. <laughs> Anybody can be Portuguese. Anybody. You know? And uh, so... I made, that one, yeah? No, I made, I made some shirts that said Portuguese by blood, Portuguese by choice. Good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, and everyone likes that they shirt. They love that one, yeah. I gotta get out. Anybody can be Portuguese. Anybody. <laughs> yeah. If you have baboos, you're Portuguese. If you don't think before you talk, you're Portuguese. Yeah. That's how it goes. What the, what did you say was your favorite song? Lucille. 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 That's about the one that made me the big big yeah. hit. Uh, I got controversy again with the Imelda when she came to Imelda. Hawaii dressed up Imelda? as her Imelda Marcos mm -hmm. and with all the uh, shoes, yeah. All the, no shoes. I walked oh. on stage barefoot. barefoot. Her shoes were still in the Philippines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she had to just dig out, right? So yeah. Got, so I saw on TV every day, and so I told my my costume lady. She Excellent, Kathy James. I said, design something for me that looked like on TV because then mm -hmm. it's familiar with the, the audience and everybody saw yeah. every day she was on TV. So I had the hair and the bun and the big pro earring, everything. Walk on stage on dress rehearsal, all mm -hmm. the audience. I had, it was noodle shop too. It was 200 something, all my friends and all that. Oh, they crack up laughing. My manager <laughs> said, you look too much like her. You better take something off. <laughs> Didn't she see it too? Did yeah, well, seen it? eventually, yeah. There any other famous people? In a short period of time. Any other famous people you oh, met? Oh, well, yeah. Carol Burnett came to the show, and uh, Bob. I could have met Bob Hope, you know, and. Uh, he was at the show. He, yeah, he came to the. No, he came to list to see me. See me. Yeah. And he was at the front desk, and the baboos behind the front desk. I was practicing in the little shop. The guy said, Oh, he's not here. Oh. And that was it. Oh man, Cabernet, Bob Hope, who else? Your neighbors. Uh, let's see, a couple but, of guys from was from, Don. Uh, Don was around your time too. Oh yeah, Don. Yeah. When I first started at the little shop, he's the one who recruited me to go on the road with uh, Ariyoshi. Okay. All the islands. Yeah, that's when I was doing Radio Coho and uh, before Lucille. Yeah, and um, we did the big uh, rally at the uh, at the um, stadium down and. Uh, I think it was like 50,000 people or something like oh, that. Wow. And so I, I went out on stage and I did my, my routines. And that's the one where I did, what do you call a 40, what, what, wait, what is the car, what is the color of a Portuguese car? And then these people, <laughs> they yell out, Silva! Yeah. Yeah. Silva! Oh my God! Silva. I said, How come you folks know my joke? <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, So when you turn the engine, what does it make? And they don't know that part. Yeah, yeah. I had you one already. said, Pacheco, Pacheco, Pacheco. <laughs> when you toot the horn, Arusha, Arusha, Arusha. <laughs> and what color? I said, the silver. Yeah, the yellow silver. And I said, and what's the brand? Camaro. And that's it. That was, a, that was my joke, my Portuguese joke. It wasn't even a mean joke, you know, kind of stink or whatever. It was just sim simple, simple, you know? And then when you but, fall asleep, it's a Mendoza. Uh, a Mendoza. <laughs> Cardoza. Well, the Cardoza sleep. Uh, fighting in the car, Cabral. Walking on the sand, Santos. First of Portuguese following him. First of uh, Machado. Machado. So that was, that's you know this simple stuff from way back you know? yeah yeah <laughs> but the, the 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 one that really really I think was an experience of my life UH band asked me to come down and do halftime Lucille when Lucille was big hit at the Aloha Stadium at the stadium so between you know I went out and they started the music then when by in Kalihi I saw this one lady sat down at him on her ring <laughs> and the place was packed yeah packed. And so when it came time to what, Lucille, you're gonna leave me now. The whole place went yell. What I did not expect that. 
Yeah. Wow. The whole place, you know, what, Lucy? You leave it now. The kids never eat yet. And I just, my <laughs> chicken skin. Chicken skin. I yeah. was like, I cut weak legs. I said, oh my gosh. <laughs> I said, I guess it is, you know, household. Yeah, that's you know, a- it. hit every place. Yeah. Radio Koho was playing it, the Japanese radio station, you know, was playing the Lucille. That the, well, even the old Japanese ladies loved this song, so. She was me. on iTunes? Lucille, Lucio, yeah, it's on YouTube, yeah. Lucille. YouTube. Yeah. yeah. He can sing them right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> but you, you, was, I, you must have been the, the man in Hawaii. How was it, like, being... Well, I was with that me, popular. and then there's rap, and there's yeah. Andy. You know, there were all of us together. But you'd get noticed you know? everywhere. Booga booga, yeah. <laughs> everywhere you go, you get noticed. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. A lot of free stuff. Um, <laughs> a lot of free well, stuff. it depends. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but I also had my school program daytime. Yeah, yeah. That's where and I so, remembered you yeah. from. Yeah. I, I used to, to do like... the school program five, three schools back then. I uh, it was 1985 already, so Lucille was out already. And um, but in 1980, it was my first school in Maui, and uh, the principal of Kahului Elementary knew of my Lucille song. All the kids did, mm-hmm. everybody did. And so, my cousin, I said, You know, I need to do stuff daytime instead of yeah. going golfing because I went to seminary, I learned a lot about kids. I want to instead of out. going golfing, <laughs> so I like to, you know, let's like do so. My manager wanted me to go golfing this yeah. coffee, but I just wanted to do something for the kids, for the kids, for, mm-hmm. the, for the community. Yeah, and I said that would That's be a good. good start, you know. So the prison, yeah, come. And so you had five hundred, seven hundred, or so, whatever from K to eight. I said, oh my gosh, that's a wide. But I knew the peanut butter jelly song, Butahan, and I knew those Butahan. things already. Yeah. So that they kind of got their attention, and then I just did some some uh, messaging, you know, reading, studying, laughing, family, and I. That's good. And uh, so that kind of stuff. So that was that happened in nineteen eighty. I remember all your chants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, Everybody so, from Hawaii, if you yeah. if you live in Hawaii, you've seen Frank DeLima at, at your school, probably. Yeah, yeah. a lot of them. Oh, yeah. the I remember at mine. Most participated, you know. And uh, there's a few that didn't, but most did. I think the first year that I had statewide, private and public, uh, only one school. And the rest, what I would have had 100% if that one school said, okay. What year. school was that? I'm curious. I'd like to tell you. <laughs> was it Punahou, yeah? Huh? Was it Punahou? No, no, no. Okay, I went, I went Punahou. Okay. <laughs> No, they they were <laughs> always welcome me. Yeah, always, Puno, yeah, I remember you coming to Puno. Uh-huh. So, um, so then it from one school went to, the next year went to all the elementary, and middle schools, and uh, my cousin had a list, and I said, "Hey, I got six shows on the weekend. I'm not gonna have one voice. You're putting oh me in sixteen God. schools, yeah. and this oh. is in four days." And he said, "God provides." I said, "Don't throw that guilt at me, <laughs> you know." But I did it, and it was fine. It was half hour East school. Yeah. And uh, following year, Kauai Wannabe, then Big Island. And before you know it, in 87 or 86, um, statewide, the mm-hmm. DOE office made the schedule for me. Nice. So it was three schools a morning, five days a week. Wow. And I can't believe I did that because three nighttime I was working at the noodle shop, you know. Five days and a week. And then on wow. Mondays, we, my manager and I would go to go visit all the showrooms. Every Monday, a different show, Monday, a different showroom. And, showrooms uh, where in Hawaii, in in Oahu, just to look for Waikiki. for future venues or what? No, no, visit the fellow entertainers. Oh wow! Promotion. So like, like say hi, Don Ho, them, everybody. Then, yeah. yeah, every week was no somebody media. else. And if it was a brand new restaurant opening, you'd we go, would there. go to the brand new restaurant and go Social say congratulations. Life. Oh wow! You know, that's a by manager. Very Networking. smart lady. <laughs> yeah. And then she did the PR. She used to cook for the, all the entertainers after they power work on Fridays. Mm-hmm. Come over to Noodle Shop. And so I would wait for them, you know. And so it would be like 2 o'clock in the morning. She'd make fried rice, eggs, whatever. Because GM of the hotel, right? So, yeah, yeah. So that was like a promotion for the show. Right. Because that's how you build up your customers and all that. Oh, through, you're busy. Through a, seven oh, days a week? Seven days a week. Go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and everywhere you have to give that energy. You know, that's... I, I had like, it back then. Yeah. Would you I ever... Still, now I'm a little bit more tired. I'm yeah. I'm be 75, you know what I mean? What would you say was the the most challenging thing about being this popular, doing seven... Working seven days a week? Well, uh... What's the most well free time, you know, free time. for yourself, yeah, that kind of stuff. But that's okay, because I used to go play darts, and I, you know, I still have found time for that. You love what you do. I love, yeah, so. yeah. So that's 
the kids in the mornings of today, you know, they mm-hmm. were just loved my sumo outfit and and listen to the story of Jesse. Mm-hmm. They were quiet the whole time. And then when it came to do the dance, the funny dance was like 10 minutes into the session yeah. already. Mm-hmm. So I had them quiet and I'm talking. Because the story is interesting about Jesse. Yeah, yeah. You know? And then uh, then I would say, okay, now you're ready. And so I, I do this. This is a formal sumo dance. You go like this, like that. <laughs> They're getting all serious. <laughs> then I squat down. And then the music starts. Then I go, boom. Like that, <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing, and then from there, just boom again, and then and then I go into the sumo dance. Yeah. Then they are having a good time, and then I do another funny thing after that. They do peanut butter, and the, that was the little ones. The older ones peanut, I did other parodies. Butter. Yeah. Jelly. Yeah, I remember it all. <laughs> That's amazing, and you're still going strong. How many years of doing comedy right now? How many years is it? F- uh, Forty-seven. Forty-seven what years, heck? comedy. That is professionally, yeah. Yeah, professionally. Yeah. But uh, from maybe time. From baby time, you'll be what? 110? Uh, mommy kissing. <laughs> what is that? From baby time, 110 years 110 of comedy. 110 years. <laughs> I can't believe it. My, what my neighbors tell me, my sister tells me about me, and with this little boy, you know, yeah. not even five. Who's yeah. your, do uh, you have any favorite comedians or, or comics you well, looked up to? Growing up, I liked I Love Lucy, The Three Stooges, Bob Hope, um, Red Skelton. I used to love those guys. I used to watch them. I mean, got to do a homework early that yeah. I would be yeah. able to watch. And uh, Lucky Luck from Hawaii, from here. Mm-hmm. I used to watch him in the mornings, get his Portuguese jokes, write them down. Yeah, yeah, Collect yeah. Portuguese jokes. Uh, Lucky Luck. He, he I don't know who that is, Lucky Luck. I know you don't. Who, do you know him, Lucky Luck? No. no, no. He's, he's from Hawaii? This is his history. Not, he's from Hawaii. He was not from here, but he, he moved here, developed a pidgin English, and he became very popular. And he was oh. the one that advertised Leonard's Pandus on TV. That's yeah. how he became very popular. He'd take the bread and he would say, this is the Pandus. <laughs> just rock them like this. <laughs> and, uh, that's the first brock. And then the next one is you eat them and then I broke them out. You know? Yeah, I broke them out. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. then he was and they wait. And then the malasadas. Look at that elastic thing. Ooh. Boy, this malasada. Like that, you know. <laughs> and and everybody, they no. would have yeah. checked jam now in this malasada. I like eating malasada. After the yeah. commercial, people would get in their car and go down and go by. Oh, my goodness. He was so powerful with that commercial <laughs> because he make it look so odd. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. You know? Sounds good the, right the, now. The yeah. face, he had the face, he had the expression, he had everything. What's your favorite food? Mm. That's hard to say. Food, uh, yeah, food is a big uh, thing. It's a hard one. I would say... Maybe malasada <laughs> dessert. I love malasada, but I like my own. Yeah, cake. but I don't make it anymore. But now I get you know I get diabetes. I gotta watch out. You know I controlled it a while ago, but uh, you just gotta watch. You have to use yeah. it as a treat. That's it. Not yeah. all the time. But uh, I would say Simon. I like Simon. Simon pizza. Okay, if yeah. you have a category, if you have a a list of ten, would be Simon and pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next one would be uh, Japanese food. I like um, yeah. um, salmon and butterfish. Mm. Ooh, butterfish. And then butterfish uh, Chinese too. food is the crispy chicken from Golden Duck. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, um, and cake noodle. Cake noodle. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> Making us hungry. The, the Vietnamese, well, with Vietnamese, it's, it's simple, yeah. The pho. I like the, the vegetable pho. I always did. So, yeah, you go down the list, each ethnic, yeah. those are my favorites. Yeah. Okinawan, Okinawan food, I, it's a bit of melon, no, I cannot, I cannot. <laughs> Filipino, I like the pancit bihon, pancit. the dry one. Not the bulut. Yeah, not bulut. No, not thank you. You ate bulut. Tata across the street. You ate bulut before? I did in Philippines. <laughs> they had to make me eat it, the, tr- the group that took me. Yeah. Oh, and you got it. I took a group to the Philippines. From kid time, though, I knew balut, but I just didn't want to eat it, you know, yeah. because it sounded like, ugh, you know. It sounds and, like uh, balut. My, it was like balut. My, my neighbor across the <laughs> street. Looks like balut. You know? And he said, I told Tata, how come you're not eating that? And he said, if I wait till the thing grow a little bit, and I said, ugh, how come? You know, I said, if that was it. A little bit From tether, that tether. Yeah. <laughs> so then when I went to Philippines, the whole group said, hey, Frank, you got to try the balut. I said, I don't want balut. It's... 
They were selling it in McDonald's and Burger King, all wow. that, you know. For, Go up to the oh, counter, it's all up there, balut, you know. <laughs> I said, what? I said, balut on this McDonald's menu. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll go try one. So I crack them open. It was gray. And I said, oh, how do they get to show you inside there? Maybe it's, you know. Put the salt on top. I don't know. So I said, okay. No, no. And I could feel the beak going down my throat. Oh, I said, oh, my God. It. I said, oh. <laughs> but that was it. First, last chance. Yeah. Time, I mean. Okay. That's amazing. You did it all, though. Yeah, I did yeah, it all. Plenty, did. plenty, plenty, plenty experiences. Do you have any advice for uh, younger comics? Yeah, if you have it in them. You got to have it. You have to have that ajinomoto. You got to have the feeling. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you got to know when and when not to. And, and timing, uh, and timing yeah. is so important. Um, and your imagination is very important with mm. that. So you have to have the imagination where you, it frightens you to death as well. Mm. Not only creates good, you know, funny, funny stuff, but you also get scared sometimes, you know, and that's, that's where you got the, that's me, I tell you. Oh. You gotta do it scared. You still you get you get nervous before you go on stage? Sometimes depending on the if, if it's an audience that I'm not familiar with, yeah. Then I'll, I'll still be a little bit nervous. Or if I have a brand new material, mm. that always is, you know, because yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah. write the stuff you gotta, every six months we were changing our show. You Some of the stuff was still no, not anymore, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah I do only the best of now. <laughs> yeah. I get away Aren't with you it. Performing at the Pro Ridge yeah, as yes. well. And I yeah, do the yeah. best of. Yeah. yeah, I sit on stage. I tell stories like yeah. this. I talk. I just talk with the audience. There's a lot of ad lib. Yeah, yeah. ad lib, and then I also tell my stories about growing up. Yeah, I and the audiences seem to be all brand new. They every time. It's not big audience now. Only like forty people. At people Bridge. Come. Yeah, yeah. And the, the room only holds hundred, but uh, we haven't gotten to there yet. The word has to spread yet. Yeah. I'm hoping yeah. it does. You know, I'm sure with this podcast that will help. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, thank you. And you got Pro any Ridge, yeah. any other shows coming up? And the Mother's Day at the Blue Note. Blue Note. What yeah, day is Mother's what, Day? What date is Mother's uh, Day? Five thirteenth, I think, or something like June. that. It's in no May. M. Oh May. 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 Yeah. <laughs> May. <laughs> Mother, you Mother, you Mother, you know. Yeah, Mother's Day, Blue Note. Check yes, them out. Yes, yes. Yeah. Please, um, it's a it's a brunch show. I I um decided on that for Mother's Day all oh, for many years. Early then. Brunch. Yeah, Portuguese mom mothers, come early. You know, the, a lot of the yeah. old folks come out too. Yeah. What about um, where they can follow you or get information? You got a website? FrankDeLima.com. FrankDeLima.com. Right. Got all his shows there. Um, shows. You can make, buy a ticket through it. Yeah. Yep. No thing. Look up his songs. Look up Lucille. Yes. Yeah. We can ask questions anyway. Yeah. You know, yeah can yeah. I get Lucille? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> but yeah, we, uh, I mean, this is a comedy podcast, par partially comedy podcast. And I had to get you on here. So thank you for thank coming. Thank you for inviting yeah. me. I appreciate that. Yeah. And congratulations on your career. Keep thank you. Going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Frank DeLima, everybody. Hello, everybody. Yeah. <laughs>